This is an iPad Pro 10.5 with no backlight. Been seeing a lot of these lately. So uh, as you can see, my battery is isolated and this is the important part when you're disconnecting or connecting these, uh, the LCD here, you gotta make sure that's unplugged. With this one, the backlight's not our only problem. And as you can see right here, we have a broken post over here by the antenna wires and I'll get into that a little more later. There's quite a few things going on with this tablet. Uh, but for now, I just wanted to you know, briefly look under here, it's pretty rare. In fact, I don't think I found any issues so far down here by the connectors. They tend to be further up the board, but if you take a look down here, somewhat familiar, looks a little like the 12.9 uh, version, but a little bit different. However, if you look closely here, you don't see anything that looks burnt or damaged, so I think we're pretty safe over here. Now, if you go up the board a little bit, a little bit further, you'll see what I'm talking about. Over here, we've got a couple of coils, and then we have two backlight diodes. And let's try to zoom in. Uh, bear with me, my camera was acting a little funny here initially, but once we get focused, you can see we've got a diode that is just literally split in half down here. And this is where I've generally found the damage, those two coils that I passed by right there, and then there are two diodes that are connected to them. And most of the time, it seems like the diodes go bad. Occasionally, you'll see one of these coils blow up but usually you'll have to deal with these two. And one of them is kind of hidden under the edge of this little uh, frame here. So you have to peel that back a little ways so you can get inside and take a good look. And then obviously we need to have physical access to replace these. Now the good news is that Apple has been using the same diodes for these backlight systems since I want to say the very first iPad mini probably. So it's a pretty common part. I'll put it down in the video description in case you need one. And then if you take a look over here, you'll see that it's not just the backlight circuit that was damaged. We're also missing a couple of components right here close to the processor and there's actually a third one that fell off later on that one I'm pointing at right now so uh, there's been some impact or shock or something going on here that caused these to just pop right off the board so we'll come back and see if we can find something that's close as far as a match. I don't have the specs on those two components so we don't know exactly what they're supposed to be. And here's just a shot of this thing. It literally fell out of the tablet when I tipped it sideways, so it wasn't even connected on the board. All right, so we're going to come in with some flux. I've got a little bit of hot air. My hot air is actually set pretty low, and I did work with this still in the frame. Uh, obviously, be careful here if you work on it this way. You want to pay very close attention to your battery temperature. If you get that thing too hot, you're going to have some problems. So if you want to play it safe, I'd recommend you just pull the board out completely. But I was going in here pretty low with the air temperature because I'm using it in combination with a pair of tweezers. So I think I'm set about 250 or so, and that'll just kind of bring up uh, the temperature enough so that we can go in and grab this thing off the board without getting it too, too warm, you know, as far as radiating heat. The tweezers that I'm using in this particular video don't get quite enough heat transfer. So I've got a new set that I bought recently where you can actually just go in and grab this thing, but you need a much wider set, uh, wider tip on your tweezers to do that. All right, that's one down. Go ahead and clean this up.
And you probably can't tell, but I've actually got a heat shield sitting over my battery right here. And again, I recommend that uh, you do these repairs, obviously, at your own risk. But do be very careful about directing the heat away from the battery whenever possible. And just kind of keep an eye on that and make sure your battery's not getting too warm. If it does, you can have some serious, uh, dangerous problems going on there. All right, we should be good there. Now, as far as these two inductors, I ended up pulling something that's almost identical in size from a first generation iPad Air. And again, I can't tell you what the specs are exactly on these. They tend to be similar when they're close in size, but we really don't know. So um, I wanted to at least get something on here since they were missing, but uh, hopefully at some point we'll know you know, we'll get a schematic or something for this particular device.
And as I'm cleaning this area up, you'll see that we actually lost a third one of these. So these thing, this that one obviously was just barely hanging on. But uh, there's one more thing that we need to replace. All right, so we're going to drop a heat sink on top of this power management chip just to be safe because I am blowing air. And I chose this direction because the processor is on the left-hand side, so we definitely don't want that to get too much heat. And uh, just, just being cautious here, we should be okay. We've got leaded solder, so it won't take as much heat to get these things to sit on the board. All right, that should do the trick. Let's check it out. And this is going to be awkward because I have one hand underneath here holding the connectors on and putting pressure against the board so that it contacts the battery. And then we're going to reach over here and hit the power button. And with any luck, we have a backlight. Now before you put this back together, I would let it, I would go ahead and let it fire all the way up and make sure that the touch screen is working and everything else because it's just such a hassle to take these things apart and put them back together. So um, good idea to do your testing beforehand, at least before you get the adhesive on there. And do be careful plugging these things back in because it is easy to misalign the connector and end up with no image on your screen or no nothing to illuminate it anyways.